My name is Adrian Bell, and this is a poem I wrote. It's called We All, The Abstinence Syndrome. I know the old rhetoric isn't changing anybody's lives. We've all heard it all before, at least a million times. We all know drugs are bad, and we struggle to keep our vices under control, to manage our addiction and be functional, fulfilling our societal role. But of course, we all relapse. We commit to sobriety and gladly fall from grace, time and time again, guiltily indulging in the fix we allocate for our mistakes. We all have an extra rig hidden somewhere just in case, and we all have something important to say. We all feel enlightened after meditating for just a day. We all see temptation approaching, and sit patiently and wait. We make no attempts to evade the inevitable decay, because we all want an excuse to fall in love with what we hate. We are all as lost as each other in our own unique and special way, journeying inward, guiding ourselves astray, like a storm out on the horizon carrying disaster toward the bay. We all embrace the devastation and find comfort in its wake. It's like a funeral for a friend whom no one can replace. We all wish things could be different, but we are all powerless to change what nature gives and takes. So instead of swimming pools and swimming pools, we all swim laps in septic tanks because the filthy water is warm and closer than the lakes. Because we all want an excuse to get lost in what we hate because all of us are only hoping to get caught by what we chase. We all just want to sleep forever and dream our lives away because our bed is a race car and a rocket ship always changing shape because we are just as we were meant to be when we are not awake. We are perfect in our own dreams in a world far, far away. When you spoke of love as a remedy, I was reminded of escape. Because life is like a mirror whose glass we cannot break, even if we all work together with all our might against it, still life reciprocates. Until some random happening that happens, some coincidence or fate finds us examining our reflections, studying lines and marks on our face. Wondering when they appeared, after how many years of strain and lament, what experiences and trials do they represent, inspecting our perspective and weighing out our stake, dissecting the value of our actions and what conditions they create, pondering the quandary of our purpose in this existential race, lost in our minds, wandering, feeling worthless and misplaced until we're forced to square up our shoulders and straighten up our lace. Beneath the trepidation of transformation, tumultuous turmoil awaits. We discover the depth of trouble encumbered by lustful demons and snakes, that grave we all plundered with claws and rakes, sifting through the penchant neurons, cracking the serotonin safe, rifling through the mind, staying up late to excavate from bare-bone ribcage to the corners of the chemical crate, inventing imponderable chambers of empyrean delight, dopamine dancing on dendrites, a peptide palace of play, the hallows of our psyche grinding tightly against our virtue nightly like cosmogeneological tectonopsychic plates. Until the tension is no longer quelled by the dementia or propelled by the pills that we all take, and the haze that hides the fiction of the opposing mental states is stilled by the swell of ne'er-do-well allowing the fog to dissipate. Showing how severe the segregation of logic and love has become as the trans-mundane worlds separate logic and love, both Byzantine and commonplace, the two exist in tandem or in parallel, but never dare consolidate. Like yin and yang in a daisy chain, polar aspects of one force the same, love and logic seem to contradict, but in conjunction they are consummate. In this tale of altruistic adventure, the two parts of the whole are soon to splinter. While the chemical com concubine, <laughs> while the chemical concubine who rests at the convergence of the plates prays for the emergence of an angel, as her posture would illustrate, palms pressed together, fingers together, pointed to, to the heavens straight. But her infidelity has garnered her little sympathy as of late, and her misgivings as a mistress have left her with little faith. And what's left of it, should she survive this plight, she now <laughs> she never shall forsake. But for the betterment of the inspector, for whom her presence is a specter, he'd sooner protect her than reject her. But she's a collector of souls, and he's tapped for the toll. That's why he left her there on those rocks, for heaven's sake. So best to let her settle and fall as she falls. Best not to challenge nature's laws. There is a fact, one might say, that all cats got claws. But that ain't to say that the cat is a factor when catnip is involved. First, some tiny pebbles fall, barely noticeable at all. 
Nerves burdened with the vacuous silence that precipitates, but soon the grinding plates express their stress in subtle shakes. The Olympian edifice reverberates until the monolithic predicament erupts in a cataclysmic earthquake. The structure crumble and the earth growls beneath its own unbearable weight, resounding death and rebirth through mounds of rubble and dirt as it eradicates the infected consciousness that instigates. The disease that breeds, stealing life as we breathe, devouring the poison that infiltrates. In a collision of foundation causing integration and restoration, we severing the roots of evil weeds that our desires propagate. Churning like wicked seas, our thoughts their currents of disgrace. Tossing, turning, yearning, calling at our flesh, the last sun burns like mace. Like light bulbs popping in our eardrums, each urge for light exacerbates the pain that hides inside the darkness that no one that no light can erase. Like, a, like razor edged wheels of steam trains, cold sweat crawls over the wrinkles of our face. Tongue and cheek bleed from spasms of jagged teeth. Tendons tearing endlessly, bones bend but never break, the destitution is eternal, the riddance is infernal, my senses no longer shall sustain. Not before this feeling I know now, had I ever known the wrath of vengeful pain. Writhing in disdain, my body ravaging my brain, as if to scream the devil's sermon, its parables seething through my veins. Then it reached my core of being and violently proclaimed. This is for all the pleasures you adored, despite being forewarned, the foresight you have scorned, indulging without shame. For all the bliss you stole was nature's gift, which you tended with such remiss. Elements adulterated and mixed, you played the fool playing alchemist by taking magnanimous risk. Hemartia becoming your bane, in your pursuit of gratification your virtue was defamed. Your conscience pleaded with you, but its pleas you overcame. No time for regret or redemption remains, this will be the end of your derbaturous campaign. Its, me its message was a diamond, sharp and clear, with each moment passing, feeling more like years. No sound could be heard, but ringing split my ears. Your life is a mess, valor bereft, with no merit to regain. A rubber check, a heavy chest, and a grandiose debt. This is all that's left of what your life became. I am the martyr for your actions, and my blood has been drained. For the cost of your affliction, of your guardian has been slain. But unexpected after the recklessness and so much pain, like a shadow my affliction will forever remain. This world was made white as a dove, pure and free of blame. Your indulgence in its beauty has given its love a stain, but it carries with it character on its wings with no refrain. In the end there is nothing about any of it all that should change, for we are all just characters and this world is just a stage, a fraction of a second. A moving picture captured briefly in a fraction of a frame. By Adrian Esbo. Thank you.